Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show and welcome to Walk on Wednesday. And today we have a very, 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 very special guest, Adrian Eagle from, he's from Adelaide, Australia, but he, uh, he bases out of Melbourne, Australia. It's nine o'clock at night right there. And welcome to the show, Adrian. Oh, thank you so much, Prabhu's, for having me. I'm, like I was telling you, I'm absolutely an everyday other for Wisdom of the Sages. <laughs> I've, I've listened... Said- he said it was like the Joker when the Joker got on the TV show. Yes. You've seen the yes. Joker movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. So no, thank you both so much. Honestly, I owe you both uh, so much, oh. just so much gratitude and just so grateful to just have your association every day and uh, just to, you know, read along, uh, read along with the Gita with you both. And uh, just means a lot to me. So Thank you both for the role you play in my life every day. So thank, thank you, you and hello to the whole community here. I definitely, um, I know you both have so many fans here in Australia as well. Like Raghu, you um, you need to come back and do a tour here, both of you. So Wisdom of the Sages Australian tour. Let's make that happen. All right. A lot of I'm too. I'm, I'm too. I'm too messy. I couldn't share a tour touring trailer with Co- with Costuba. <laughs> Come on, come on, we do it all the time. <laughs> well, I'm used um, to it. Um, a- Adrian is an incredible songwriter of soul music. Yeah. And he, you know, he is an award or award winning uh, Australian singer, songwriter. Um, the Area Awards, which are like uh, the Australian Recording Industry Associate Music Awards, in short for it. Um, he's also a winner of two SA Music Awards, which are like, I think that's Southern Southern Australia. But this is like big stuff. And th- that was his music we were playing right before the show. You can go to Spotify and hear his stuff. It's called, call, it's called Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, Eagle. And it is so, it is so beautiful. You're one of those guys who's really talented. See, I got into music. I was I, I didn't have that much talent. You were actually <laughs> a very talented man. And when I listen to it, my whole family, I kid you not, dances around the house. So thank you. Um, and it, it seems Honestly, like I'm a big fan of yours. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's a it's a total different type of it's, a, you know, he, he sings like soul, soul music, soul music. Yeah. And um, now I. You're mentioning that you didn't start using that gift of singing until you were how old? Until I was a day before my 26th birthday. So I went, yeah, my <laughs> teen years were just um, consumed with just just suicidal thoughts and just completely swallowed up by my, you know. So I was in a bad place for a lot of years and... Um, yeah, it took me until pretty much 26 years old before I released my first song out to the world. But uh, divine timing and, you know, grateful, grateful to be alive and just be sharing and, you know, learning and, and giving back and serving, you know. So 
So uh, it's it yeah, seems like a lot of your regardless. Adrian, it seems like a lot of the the maybe not a lot of the music, but a big part of your message is how you overcame some demons, which is sort of our story too. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our stories coming into spiritual mm -hmm. life. Um uh, did did music assist you with that recovery or what what helped you on your like spirit search your spirit journey totally totally yeah, music music was a big big part of it you know but that's something for me that's just always always been natural and i think that's uh it's something i think attracts me into bhakti as well you know is the you know thankful chanting you know and um just the, the ancient melodies and just that sound healing, you know, um, I can, you know, everything, everything that I read and everything that I hear um, from Bhakti, I just, it resonates so much with me. And <laughs> even before, even before I knew what it was, you know, like I yeah. always had God in my life. I was raised um, similar to both of you. I know a bit of your stories, how you were raised in, in Christian uh, homes. Um, my dad is Fijian Indian. So, uh, you know, I, gr I did grow up seeing, you know, photos or uh, paintings of Krishna, um, but didn't really, I was raised by my mother, you know, and my mother was actually, even though her family's Catholic, she raised me in a Mormon, uh, a Mormon upbringing. Okay. So for the first, yeah, so for the first, I would say 12 years of my life, I was going to church every Sunday at a Mormon church. Wow. So, you know, it's... It's something, yeah. I've, I've, I've um, very familiar with the concept of, you know, or the feelings of faith, and that's something I'm very, you know, glad and happy to have held on to throughout, you know, any dark times that I had been through and and go through. It's it's faith that definitely is the core there, you know. So super, super grateful to be instilled with those, you know, those values. But absolutely found bhakti much like music later on in my life and there's no looking back you know i'm so so you're, lucky to yeah, you're pretty new to community. you're pretty new to bhakti you're pretty new to bhakti yes but you're, yes but, um but you've been listening he never misses wisdom of the sages every day it's quite amazing I'm a, I'm a super fan of wisdom of the sages like i know all of the sayings i know i know every catchphrase everything that you put on a mug i i'm all about it you know i know everybody i know i know the whole crew <laughs> um, so I am a firm other and, you know, we'll continue to support you guys. And I'm a Patreon member and just love everything you're doing. You know, I've got to give, I've got to give a shout out as well to, um, to Caleb Williams, who he's, he's on the Zoom tonight as well. He's out here as well. He's um, also practicing Bhakti. He's works at Unified Music Group out here in Australia. And um, he's another uh, brother in the community who, you know, I've been talking to and, we share a lot of a lot of uh, talks, and he actually took me my first kirtan with with everybody was only a couple of Sundays ago, and just doing kirtan with everybody just it was such a beautiful beautiful yeah. feeling there. So you're gonna thank be you to everyone out there. Yeah, oh. yeah, you're gonna be yeah. leading yeah. the no, kirtans. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think early well, on during the you. pandemic, I discovered you. I don't know how I discovered you, but maybe you wrote me or I started following you on Instagram or something. I was like, man, this guy's huge. Um, and I was like, man, and then I listened to your music. I was like, this guy's great. And I looked you up on Wikipedia. I was like, this guy's award winning. And I was, and then we had a few exchanges back and forth. And you've always been in my mind to get you on a walk on Wednesday or when your record, when your record comes out, we'll get you on a Sunday as well. And then I didn't hear from you for a while. So I was like, there's no way he's still into Bhakti. He just got into Bhakti. There's no way. And I didn't talk to him. I was like, he's probably out of it. And then we sort of reconnected the other day. He's like, no, I listen every day still. So it's great. No, I'm, I, I'm not, I, I will, I, you know, I'm so grateful for Bhakti and just everything that I've just been absorbing and learning. Like, obviously, even just having Indian heritage, even though, um, you know, that's just the body I was born in. But just, just having, you guys are bringing me so much closer to, uh, uh -huh. you know, my true self just by being in association and just being part of this big community uh and this you know reading these ancient texts i am super it's grateful. powerful yeah. powerful absolutely hmm. have you ever kostu have you ever been to fiji uh no i never have i always wanted to go to fiji it, my group spent a lot of time there yeah yeah um yeah. you ever been to fiji adrian i've been to fiji once 
you know, I went with my mother. So um, well, it was very much in like a tourist, tourist sort of way. But, that's okay. Um, you know, I think it's, it's okay it's to go to Fiji in a country. tourist way. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful country. Um, but I'm I'm very lucky to be you know here in Australia. I think Australia is such it's it's just such a magical country and beautiful ancient sacred country. Um, mm. And but as well, I'm so you know I, I need to do the trek to India. I'd love to go uh, to India with you all one oh, day. Let's that do would it be together. So, that we're would, waiting for you. We're we're, yeah. we're setting some January dates. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah, I, so. I know. I know Caleb and myself. I know we're we're talking about it and joining all you guys. Right. So, oh man. You know, I want, obviously, I want to come to um, Super Soul Farm as well. Like, uh, you know, we're waiting for you, man. I got some sheep dung for you to shovel. He's got waiting some work for you. For you. I got you some work. You won't be able to get rid of me. I'll be there. You won't be able to get rid of me. <laughs> Adrian, it is a great pleasure to have you on the show. It's great to have you connected with us. And um, so I want everybody to go to Spotify right now. You can just put us on pause. Go to Spotify. Look up Adrian Eagle, A D R I A A D R I A N Eagle and follow him and Very positive uh, music right Very a positive uplifting inspiring <laughs> and we are waiting for your american tour we're going to come see you and party with you oh. backstage if you give us the secret codes yes. to enter your backstage <laughs> vip room <laughs> harry ball everybody thank you so much thank you so much for being appreciate thank it thank you adrian thank you thank adrian you. and we <sighs> And we also want to thank um, or, or give our heart out to Lori Pag, whose mother passed mm. away. Yes, Lori. Beautiful Italian mother. Her her son, she posted a picture this morning. And also our friend Karnam Rita passed, who we interviewed on the show, who was struggling with cancer. But, you know, it, truthfully, I was following him for a while, and I saw him in Tucson. And he Just was recently. Looking, yeah. He was looking better than ever. I mean, he was looking strong, and he was very clear, uh, lucid, and, um, you know, and he was going through so many different alternative therapies, but our heart goes out to him because he's one of those people who've been dedicating themselves to bhakti and transformation yeah, right. and giving, giving love. And, you know, when a devotee leaves their body, it's actually a very glorious thing. It's sad mm -hmm. for us because we don't have their association anymore, but um, it's glorious. Uh, it's a glorious way to go. So we want to, um, our heart extends to his wife and, um, children and uh and yeah. also you know this uh another devotee um from hungary uh advaita charya das advaita charya prabhu passed away too he, he's the mm -hmm. guy with the tat all the tattoos yeah yeah, yeah. oh man so uh, today i'm gonna pray to all these for all these folks special people maybe it's an auspicious day yep. it is an auspicious day now all right so let's dive in the bhagavatam and uh we got to go to Australia. Australia is one of these incredible places. It's like just so far away. We don't go. Americans don't go there that much. We really get a lot of great support from a lot of different people in Australia. It's what Adrian's saying is true, you know, on the different social medias and stuff. And we get a lot of response. Grateful to all the yeah. Australians. Yeah. Um, best beaches in the world, Australia. They got kangaroos. And they've got kangaroos. Come on. <laughs> and koala <laughs> bears. <laughs> I'm gonna smuggle back a wallaby. And oh, and they have plat platypuses. Plat and they have the mysterious platypus, which are not of this world. I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna go there, but I don't believe they're of this world. I believe they've been imported from higher planets. Okay, so let's get into our Bhagavatam. Om. Wait, what do I say? What do I say now? Om Namo. We already did that. Narayanam Narayanam Maskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Madhiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nichyam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service to the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Omagyana Tamrandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Mandatam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha. 
I offer respectful obeisances to my spiritual masters who have opened my eyes, which were blinded by the darkness of ignorance with the ointment of knowledge. Ah, oh, Canto 3, Chapter 4. Vidura approaches Maitreya. And we last mm -hmm. left off on text. Kostuba. Let's see if you get it. <laughs> I thought you were, I thought you were gonna like actually have it today. Like you came in with that kind of confidence. Not gonna but... not gonna have it, Kostuba. I okay. did we, we I ended... did have the bio down for Adrian Eagle. Come on! Okay. Can, cut me some slack. <laughs> Props for that. I can't um, have it all. I can't have the Narayanum. I can't have the verse. I can't have the mic on. It's okay. too much for me. I'm a simple man. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I got your back. We finished with text eleven yesterday. Uh, and, and and so uh, let's go ahead and read that one. It, it, that that Krishna said to uh, Uddhava, he called him Vasu, right? Because he was oh, Vasu. Like, yeah, because like in another life, he was one of the eight Vasus, one of the eight kind of. You know, you can call them devas, right? They're they're like these beings that are responsible for the different, the energy the department, energies. the lighting of the department, the, yeah, the sun, the moon, the 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 wind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So he was one of those vasus, but in that life, he had a desire, right? and a desire to hang with Krishna yes. in an intimate way. With yeah, with with he had this devotion in his heart, and his desire was to have Krishna's association, personal association. So Krishna revealed to him that um, you, he says, you particularly desire to achieve my association. And he says that, that, that it's a very difficult for others to obtain, but I award it to you, right? Because that, that association, it only comes with that kind of deep, strong desire. So that's, that's what desire we, we have to develop in this lifetime. We have some, we have some insight into that desire. Like we, we're here about it. Yeah. We sometimes sort of get it. We need to like cultivate a burning, desire we can't be on snooze any longer with our desire we've got to be very very eager to want to associate with krishna um and that's how you and that's how you get it it's, it's just from a strong desire you can have it anytime you want it but you, you gotta want, to want it, it. Yeah. you gotta but, want it but but our wants get so um diverted yeah with with the uh minutia of material existence <laughs> I like that Isn't that a great word minutia <laughs> what does it mean is the, the me, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> it means lots of little things. Is that what it means? The, the yeah. little unimportant things of material yeah. existence. The, the small, precise, or trivial details of something. Oh, the yeah, yeah. This is a great yeah. word. Minutia. Minutia. We can't snooze any longer. We got to become eager to hang out with Krishna and the devotees of Krishna. Because let's face it, there, we read about this all the time. There are higher beings. And there are lower beings. Like, like there's like ghostly beings. There's devas. But even on this planet, there are higher beings. And this isn't like a cast. What are you talking about? What, yeah. are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> what kind of higher <laughs> beings? <laughs> there's people that are just consumed with higher thoughts, oh, okay. higher vibes, higher vibrations. And when you hang out with them, they just lift you up. They inspire you. They make you want to become better. Or... There's people that are very dark. So we want to associate with those higher beings. We want to be lifted up. Who knows where they even came from? They're placed on this earth and they bring us higher. We got to collect people like that, bring them into our life, keep them close to us, embrace them. Mm. That's important stuff. It is. Or else we can get lost in the in the in the television, right? In in the in the people magazines of this world, uh, you know, and just suck our consciousness so low. Hang out with the higher beings. Have that strong burning desire. Come on. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think um, this th really what you're talking about is the essence of our practice. Like you said, it's it's cultivating a burning desire. That's really what a bhakti yogi is doing. As mm -hmm. we, we, we spoke about yesterday, we're not trying to annihilate our desires. We're not trying to remove all desires from our consciousness because the bhakti yogi is saying, actually, that's not even possible. It's our, it's our nature to desire. Right. That's what we yeah. do. <laughs> That's really yeah. all we do. Yeah. You know, we desire and then that desire will be fulfilled in one way or another, according to our karma. But really, that's the power that we have is to desire. So the yogi says, let me really focus on that. Let me focus on on cultivating the, 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 the desire that brings the best results. And and that desire is ultimately reconnecting with that source. And, and like you're saying, it's got to be burning. Right. It can't 
because it's going to go one way, you know, either we're going to get pulled one way or another. We got to cultivate that burning desire. And, and you and I, I was thinking, you know, I had this experience yesterday. It was, it was really nice. And I thought of you and I thought of the great souls that have been kind to you and I in our lives, right? Um, that I, I was sitting on my, uh, you know, my couch. I got my new apartment now, so I got a, like a new temple set up, you know. You got a new and couch, you said? You just I sit on my couch. new couch. You got a new yeah. couch? Well, it's not a new couch. It's it's basically just like a platform bed, but I use it like a couch, you know. It's the one I sleep on when I go there. Yes, that's right. It's a and great so, bed. I love that. <laughs> well, my little you, cot. You blessed it. You blessed it. <laughs> it's my little cot. And so um, I'm sitting there, and I'm and I'm looking at my altar. My altar, you know, I have Radha and Krishna Deez, or Radha Damodar. And then behind them is a painting, backdrop painting. Really, it was really done nice by the devotee um, uh, Vrindavan Das, you know, who was super talented, you know. And, and it's it's a backdrop of, it's like it's like a grove, you know, a kunja. And they say, a grove. They we use grove. the word grove a lot in Krishna consciousness. Have you ever noticed Krishna that? hangs out in the groves. It's right? a grove. I've, I probably never said the word grove until I became into bhakti. <laughs> You know, how many times do you say Grove in your lifetime? Come on, right? Grove. <laughs> well, this Grove Street in Manhattan, I used to almost live there. Russell, okay. I grove a lot. But, um, or so you got a Grove painting. So, so well, Radha and Krishna in that Grove, and then, by, you know, through the branches of the Kadamba trees, you can see the Yamuna River and the sunset, yeah. you know. And I'm sitting there, and I felt like, you know, I feel like I'm sitting with that view and chanting, you know, uh, Maha Mantra. I felt like I was sitting at Inlital in Brindavan. Now, you know Inlital? I know that grove well. Last time I was at that grove, a monkey came in and jumped on Danielle and Amalini. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a transcendental monkey in a transcendental place, and it yes. was part of the whole loving experience. <laughs> right, Sometimes. Right. Okay, go on. So Inlital, literally Inlital means a tamarind tree. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was this tree that Sri Chaitanya, when he visited Vrindavan, he sat under that tree and he... <laughs> gazed over the Yamuna River because it was kind of like the same view I felt like I had, right? And meditated on Radha and Krishna. Mm. And I felt like my experiences in life that I've been gifted by the mercy, right? By the grace of kind people that tolerated me and invited me to come to those places, you know, and instilled a desire in our hearts, right? To to know and love and return always to Vrindavan. It was because of those experiences that I was able to sit in my in my home in New York and feel like I was in Vrindavan. I was thinking the same thing yesterday. I was thinking yeah, I the exact same thing. I kid you not. What were I you kid thinking? you not. Well, first of all, it's just like Adrian Eagle is just saying. How come Adrian Eagle has one of these names I cannot just call him Adrian? I got to call him Adrian Eagle. <laughs> Adrian Eagle is saying the same thing. He gave a shout out to a friend who sounds like he's been sort of cultivating him in bhakti. Um, right, right. But but I was thinking like people have like spoon fed me bhakti. And it's one thing to spoon fed a person. And it's very easy just to say, oh, thank you for that. Back to my world. Right. But given it enough that we've developed an attachment to it. That's the big thing. Can you right. give them enough bhakti so they can get attached to it. So like it starts to like become part of them. And that is both on the receiving end and also on the giving end. Can we give bhakti to people? So it's not just like, oh, that was a fun time in my life where I got into bhakti, where it actually stays with them, becomes part, it takes root in their system. And we're lucky like that. It's, it's just sort of become, it's be, sort of become part of what, of our identity right. in, in a beautiful way, our external identity as well as our internal identity. Right. How lucky, how fortunate, so, how fortunate. And I was right. And as I'm sitting there and I'm in, in also like my altar is kind of like, you know, it's kind of built into like a, a wall of bookshelves. So it's kind of like a, yeah, a know, grove of sorts. It's, it's a grove of, of <laughs> a grove of, of books, of beautiful books, you know, like, and I, and I realized each one of these books is like a treasure. Right. You pick up a book from Rupa Goswami, from Shiva Prabhupada, or, you know, you open it up. And and every word in there is so valuable, and it and and it kind of gives. I remember once my guru just 
he asked, he, you know, how it could be so blunt, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, speculation. He said to me, he, he asked me something about my own japa, like my, my own meditation practice, and asked me something like, how's it going? You know, like, and I was, you know, honest with him. And I said, you know, when I chant, my mind's totally distracted. And, and, and he, he kind of like, um, he wanted to cut through that, you know? And he just said, like, he said, what's the problem? <laughs> Like that, like you know, he was like he was like a New Yorker, you know. What's the problem? You pick up a book, you read a few verses, you you meditate on your mind, and you start to chant. What's the problem? <laughs> you know, he said it like that. Yeah, and, dude, and, what is your problem with Jaffa anyway? What's your it's, problem? It is my it, so so. But I but you know he said that to me probably like thirty years ago, and but it came to my mind yesterday that I can just pick up on his and I did it, you know. I picked up one of these books and I read from it. And it was so inspiring. You know, I've read the Yuman, the Yumunastika by Rupa Goswami. It's a great Astaka. Prayers to the Yamuna River. And I'm sitting there looking at the Yamuna River, you know, and Radha and Krishna there at the Yamuna River. And that, you know, and I'm just feeling so fortunate that that desire to, to want to return to Vrindavan, to feel some kind of attachment to, what a gift that is, right? And, and, and you know, uh, that intimate, Bhakti, the deep bhakti, where the soul really needs to go for, you know, or it's called raga bhakti, right? Like, mm. where it's not mechanical, but it's like, it's really just love spontaneously in one's heart for God and for every living being. That like incredible kind of, eagerness, an incredible eagerness. Well, th they say, right, Rupa Goswami writes, what is the qualification for that? It's not austerity. It's not learning. It has nothing to do with one's birth. Right. Well, that's good because I failed all three of those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you, it, but it, none like, of the dong, yeah, none dong, of those, it's, dong. Not, it's nothing external. It's what's internal, and what it, what is that qualification? Rob? Strong eagerness. Yeah, it's literally the word is it's, in Sanskrit. The word is lobha. Lobha, yeah, greed. It's translated as greed, actually. Mm. Right. So again, like it's not does it's not that um, we need to. Um, rid our consciousness of desire or even greed. Actually, what we need to do is we have to have intense greed, but that greed has to be for what's real, what's true, you know, what's valuable. Not for the things of this world, but for the love of the spiritual world. That that's the that's the desire that the bhakti yogi is cultivating. And and and, and you know, it's just a spark, and you want to fan that spark and fan that spark with your with your sadhana, with your chanting, with your hearing, with your association, fanning that spark. You know? Now now I have to share with you what I shared over dinner yesterday with my family. Because okay. my daughter said, this is, by the way, pe people are like, oh, come on. This is the Bhagavatam. This is the essence of the Bhagavatam right here. Listen. Okay. So my daughter shared, my share, daughter shared this Krishna conscious dream we have. You know, sometimes kids say, hey, I want to tell you my dream. And it's like, no, please don't tell me your dream. This is going to take 20 minutes. <laughs> and my daughter shared this Krishna conscious dream she had of Hanuman. And well, my wife well, was, she had a dream of Hanuman actually. She had a dream. dream of Hanuman worshiping Shiva. I don't know the story, but, but uh, some pastime because Ram <laughs> worships. Shiva. That's because you tell all these uh, past, you kind of like you, 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 um, you, you uh, what's the word I want to use? How you add to the pastimes? You no. embellish your embellishments. Maybe well, it came from maybe. her embellishment. No, well, anyway, sometimes we have very people have very Krishna conscious dreams. So they can, my kids had Krishna conscious dreams. Sounds like it. But anyway, I I had and and it it said you know sometimes dreams are just crazy dreams. Sometimes these dreams can speak to you. They say mm -hmm. if the message of that dream supports what the guru says, what the sacred literature says, and what the previous saints say, you can accept those dreams as like instructions. Sure, of course. And I you know and I, I, in my own life I've had some very, very powerful dreams. And one was when I was in a very dark place in my life. It was after, after I would have been a devotee for years. And then I had like a whole, a whole sinkhole I fell into. And um, I was just sort of like away from the association of devotees. I was really in a tough place in my life. And I remember being, it, and it has everything to do with what you were just talking about. Being, everything was in black and white not color, black and white. And it was in the dream. And I was walking up the stairs of, uh, of, a, of a concrete room in a concrete stairs. And I got to the top and there was one of my beautiful teachers sitting at a desk. And, um, and, and he said, Raghunath, welcome. I was like, and he said, can you open the window for me? It's very dark in here. And so everything is in black and white. I open the 
windows up and it's bright, full color, out of control colors. And I'm overlooking the Vrindavan courtyard of Krishna Balaram Temple. Wow. And I just burst into tears in my dream. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm here. I'm in Vrindavan. I'm here in Vrindavan. And he looked at me and he said, yeah, it's Vrindavan. And you can be there anytime you mm. want to be. You just have to want it. And this is like, and I, and I realized like, all you have to do is want it. And you can have that association of Krishna. The problem is I'm tempted by too many things of this material world, even the silly things of this material world. Mm. And the interesting thing is I am a spiritual being. I know that spiritual food is the only thing that will satisfy my soul. And I'm nibbling on material right. junk food. Right. That's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. So like and Adrian Eagles. your digestion for the spiritual food. It's, yeah. So you're not getting that nourishment. Yeah. Take that analogy. You can play, play with that metaphor. I tease right that right. out. <laughs> so like Adrian Eagle, he listens every day, you know, and you develop an attachment to what you do on a regular basis. We hear the Bhagavatam on a regular day. And it starts to lead us to there. And it leads us to different. It's a door that we open that opens to us a new chamber. And within that chamber, there's more doors. And we mm -hmm. always have to make that upgraded choice. What, what happened with Hanuman? I don't know. It was her, some spiritual you forgot she's, her. She's, she's, gonna, she's, gonna, <laughs> she's gonna paint a picture of it, she told me. Okay, then we'll, we'll yeah. wait for it. I want you to show us that painting when it comes yeah. out. Okay. You know, I, re I remember once, um, somehow I have this memory lodged, you know, this, 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 this vision lodged in my memory. It, it, it took place decades ago. I mean, many decades, you know, probably 30, 30 or more years ago, where I, I don't even remember where I was. I don't remember exactly who it was, but I was somewhere at some temple somewhere. And there was a little girl playing, right? A little devotee girl. This is a dream or is reality? No, this is real. This okay. is real. And um, she was running around playing and just having fun. And then she ran right up to me and stared at me like intensely. And she said, um, she said, uh, you know, she's running and huffing and puffing and having fun. And then she looks at me and looks right in my eyes. And she says, I want to be a coward boy in the spiritual world. And then she just took off running. <laughs> right? She's a mystic. She's a mystic. Yeah, but, but I said to myself, now, for people that are unfamiliar, you know, less familiar, it's, you know, the whole you know, the, the whole esoteric side of the bhakti, you know, um, philosophy and culture and, and all that, it has to do with varieties of love, you know, that one can share with God. And one of them is the love of friendship that Krishna shares with his friends, the cowherd boys in Vrindavan. And that kind, the, you know, the, the beauty of that love and the depth of that love is, again, and, we, and we've been talking about this in some of the past shows, but it, um, it's something that's incredibly sublime right mm. great poetry is written about it and it's analyzed you know um in, in great depth uh something very special and very beautiful that the, the intimacy of love of god when you no longer even think this is god but mm. you think this is my friend and you feel like mm. this is my equal and that sense of equality facilitates the depth of the the love um and there's so much written about how Krishna shares that love with the coward boys of Vrindavan. And so now this little girl, she just ran up and she, I could see her desire. Here she is, how fortunate she is, right? That like she's born under the circumstances where that became her desire. And I could see the intensity of her desire, right? And I could think of like in the mind of a young girl like this, there's no lust, right? There's, there's, she's got no, Low, really lowered nature there, you know? Mm. Um, and so that desire is like, um, it, it's prominent, you know? It's not being, mm. it's not being um, uh, attacked by other kind of weeds in there. You're just kind of strangling it and, 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 and right. just how, how, you know, so although in one sense, it's just a girl saying, I want to play, you know, in a sense. But because it's, because she's raised in this uh, bhakti, um, context or circumstance it that desire is like the most precious thing in the world she's got right there in her heart and she's got it really strong you know that's you know how fortunate that's 
right how fortunate yeah and so so you know yeah. so, so I, I, but i thought another thing yesterday while i was chanting and looking you know at my altar and, and feeling like i was an imli tal that i would just like to share this with so many people but unless it's hard to, you can only share so much unless you have that experience we, we you and i like we were taken under the wing of kind people mm. that brought us to Vrindavan and explained Vrindavan to us and shared why it was so special. And by doing that, it created a desire for us to return there every year and to mm. make it n not only a part of our lives, but kind of like start to center our lives around that, right? And yeah. so that gave us years of experience, years of cultivation, years of, of um, uh, you know, just a, of, of living in that world in one way or another where so many details are, are fluffed out. And, and, and I know what Imli Tal is, and I know why I was special yeah. for Lord Tanya. I know why it's special in our lineage. I, 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 I yeah. think of that when I see that, you know, so much has to be there. And so therefore what I was just thinking is, you know, for like, say, listeners to of Wisdom of the Sages, it's just like, make it the priority in life to find those people that um fan that spark and that will mm. intensify that desire in your heart because that's there's no other business really you know, there's... And, and then you can be as good as we are <laughs> that's not what <laughs> i'm saying just, just kidding i'm, just I'm kidding. saying but you can be fortunate you know you can, be, you can become fortunate you can become blessed by great souls and yeah, you uh, find great souls you keep them close to you and nowadays with the information age you could do that through uh um, videos or um, audible, you know, uh, downloadable books or um, YouTube. It's great. Uh, yeah. Recorded lectures. There's so much good info on supporting your downtime. Right. Anyway, th thank you for right. sharing that. Thank you. Uh, eagerness, our enthusiasm, greed. is everything. It makes all the difference. Greed, 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 <laughs> spiritual greed. Yeah. All, all right. right. So, Number you 12. know, but uh, let's read up to uh, text. I think it's 15 or so. Yeah, let's read oh. up to text 15, and, and it's going to connect with this whole desire thing, okay? Okay, here's 12. Yeah. Oh, honest one, your present life is the last and the supermost because in the term of life, you have been awarded my ultimate favor. Now you can go to my transcendental abode, Vaikuntha, by leaving this universe of conditioned living entities. We are conditioned. I love that word, conditioned. You visit your visit to me in this lonely place because of your pure and unflinching devotional service is a great boon for you. Mm. Boon. I probably never used the word boon <laughs> before I got into bhakti either. Now I, I'm saying boon like every day. Hey, I had some boon. Come over here. Give me a boon of that uh, vegan ice cream. That's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that uh, Krishna calls Uddhava, oh, honest one. Oh, honest one. That's what's a clue. A, a what's the Sanskrit for that? Oh, honest Let's one. Mary, you want to look that on up? Oh, honest one. Sadhu. Uh, sadho. Sadho. Yeah. Yeah. Sadhu. So, sadhu. I guess sadhu. sadhu. Okay. 13. Right. 13. Oh, go Uddhava. In the Lotus Millennium. Do you know what the Lotus Millennium refers to, Raghuna? Is it a type error for the last millennium? Nope. <laughs> The lotus, the lotus I think the lotus millennium refers to the first millennium where uh, where Brahma takes birth from the lotus flower from Lord Narayana. Okay. So the says, lotus millennium. Yeah. Right. Udava, in the lotus millennium, in the days of yore, at the beginning of creation, there you go, I spoke to Brahma. Okay, you're right. Right? I spoke to Brahma who's situated on the lotus that grows out of my navel about my transcendental glories which the great sages describe as Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and we, we read that, that uh, condensed Bhagavatam, right? The Chattu Shloki earlier. Right. Text 14. Uddhava said, text 14, Uddhava said, O Vidura, when I was thus favored at every, I'm sorry, when I was thus favored at every moment by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and addressed by him with great affection, my words failed in tears. And the hairs of my body erupted. Boom! <laughs> what happened? After goosebumps. Smearing... Goosebumps. Oh, goosebumps. Okay. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. After smearing, 
after <laughs> what, smearing what my are you tears, picturing in your mind like his, well, his hair is exploding <laughs> yeah after smearing my tears i with folded hands spoke like this okay so here's Uddhava's prayer to krishna imagine krishna just told you raghunath raghunath your birth has been perfect you're going back to vaikuntha now oh honest ragu be like bing 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 <laughs> bing bong bing those are that's the sound for all my erupting uh hairs and then what would you say this is what Uddhava said okay. he said oh my lord devotees who engage in the transcendental loving service of your lotus feet have no difficulty in achieving anything within the realm of the four principles of religiosity economic development sense gratification and liberation but dharma art the cart the dharma yeah, art the arta, kama moksha, moksha. The so we'll talk about that goals yeah right? but he says but oh great one as far as I'm concerned, I have preferred only to engage in the loving service of your lotus feet. Right? I'm not interested in Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Not even Moksha. Right? Not I'm even Moksha. Not even Moksha. So the, the, these are called the uh, four paths, right? Pushartas. The, uh, pushartas. The four, yeah. the four things that people want of this world. They want to. They want to do their Dharma. They want to do you know their job. Um. They, they want to do some work, right? They're Arta. They, they want to fulfill their desires. I want to have a family and get this and go here and right. And then, and then, and then, then I want to like experience some detachment and some spirituality. So these are considered like the four good things of life, the four um, paths that we take it's in kind life. Of a noble, and, pious path of life. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's, it's not live fast, die young. It's like a good thing. <laughs> That's like the American dream. Live fast, die young. And and this is where um, the you know, if you go to the Vedic texts, you know, this be dead by now, <laughs> right? But, if we did that, well, we're not young anymore. So yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We've already missed that. Yeah. But um, you know, the the Vedic teachings are going to teach this dharma, arta, kama, moksha, first dharma, right? That you you behave well in life and and you live a, a noble life, and from dharma. Uh, the karmic reaction to that good living is arta, is that, you know, you become, you know, materially fortunate, you know, with a nice home, you know, the wealth that you need, you know, blessed with beautiful children, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the good life, in a sense. The good life. So this dharma, arta, and then from, from the arta that you get comes the kama, you know, like your, your, your material desires become fulfilled, right? Mm. But, but, you know, ideally that this is all playing out within a context of, you know, Vedic teachings and Vedic knowledge. So you're also realizing that um, this, although I'm, I've lived this pious life and, and I've gotten, you know, without running wild like an animal because I've been dharmic, um, I've, um, you know, I've cultivated, you know, pleasurable material life, but I've also recognized you know the uh, that that all of that is temporary and so then i begin to aim for moksha which means liberation freedom from the sufferings of this world and so that's seen as like a path that one can follow right in, in life you know um, a noble path yeah it's so interesting and this is where i love the vedic teachings because all those things it almost sounds like every religion of the world or every it's like uh or even positive living and upgraded living and good choices. It's all so good. Mm -hmm. But in Bhakti, it's like, but it's all temporary. It's That's all good, it. but it's all temporary. And there's an underlying thing, which is even higher, which is nothing of this material world will actually satisfy you. You know, it was, uh, I think Satyaraj Prabhu told me this. I think it's Aristotle he quoted. Whereas like three reasons why the material world and material desires will never fulfill you. The first one is you want something and you never get it. You know what I mean? Like, for example, Adrian Eagles, successful, award-winning songwriter. But how many people are good songwriters but never get an award? They're like just – so you, you uh, here's a material desire. I want to become a, a celebrated musician, but you never get it. And so that desire can cause pain. Mm -hmm. The second one is – you want something and you get it, but it gets taken away from you. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, you know, you become famous and all of a sudden you're not famous anymore. That's yeah. painful. 
when you lose that thing that you worked for. So that's painful. And the third reason why material, uh, material, there is no such thing as material success is because you get it. You, you want it. You get it. But when you get it, you realize it's not what it's cracked up to be. You ever have an experience like that? Ah, I thought I would love this. Well, I don't love it. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. Big deal. And so that is an interesting thing, too. And everything in the material world fits into this category. It's like big deal or I never got it, or I got it and I lost it. This is the shortcoming. And, and, and the bhakti yoga pokes at these even pious paths of spirituality and says, come on, there's something more. What's that, what's that great verse? Abrahma, Bhuvana, Luka, okay. Puna, Avartino, Arjuna. Keep going Mano with it because I can't Mano remember. Petya to Kaunteya, Puna, Janma, Navijite. Want to explain that verse? Great verse. <laughs> Well, it's a verse about that even in that, you know, that one may go even one may like become really successful materially, like super, super successful. You go to the higher planets, right? Sure. And, and even that highest planet, you know, in one sense, the highest planet is, is Lord Brahma's planet is considered to be. Um, so Abrahma Bhuvanalo, even if you go up there, yeah, um, there's still places of birth and death. Right. It, mm -hmm. it, it's still you, you're still not going to become free and, and suffering will reach you, you know. Um, but for one who surrenders unto me, Krishna says, Punar Janman and Vijite, they never take birth in this material world again. Right? You go up, you got to come back down. You know, you may even go up to the higher plants, then you take your next book back down here on earth. You know? and, and, and it's, uh, yeah, and, and it, it's, it, it, it all, it's all a big deal. It looks like big, big freaking deal. You know, so we have the whatever we get of this material world is still of the material world. And it's almost like those like we were saying earlier, we get gifted that sort of insight generally from another from another person practicing bhakti. They give us something that sort of like makes us lose taste with even the highest things of the material world. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's a, right. It's like they gift it to us. Yep. And maybe yep. we've maybe we've eaten dirt before or we've had incredible luxuries where, or the opportunities or privilege where we could have we can do whatever we want to do. And it's sort of like and then someone practicing bhakti points it out. There is no hope of the material realm. And we're like, yes, that makes sense. Been there, done that. All right, and and, that, and that's the glory of a person practicing bhakti. And all of us in our life have had someone who's come into our life and give us a little spoonful of bhakti. You know, sometimes they gave us a spoonful that was too big for us to even swallow. We're like, well, I can't take this. <laughs> Your first covered on prickrima? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got a, I've got a bunch of those, but fortunately, I was. I was nursed along the way. Okay. okay. Some of them, he chopped it all up for you into little. <laughs> yeah, it's like when a, your mom cuts up your food for you. Here, you take a little bit of this bhakti in your mouth. <laughs> you take... <laughs> so, so in this verse, um, Uddhava is praying to Krishna that that uh, you know these four uh, pushartas, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Um, he says, you know. If one's engaged in service to you, those things are like they're—they're they're not even difficult to achieve. They're—they're—they're they're, they're relatively easy. But but he says, oh, but great one, as far as I'm concerned, I preferred only to engage in your loving service. I don't want even you know kama, right? So many materials. I'm not interested. Even moksha, right? And so this right. this is an important theme that is threaded throughout the entire Bhagavad from from beginning to end. Well, that, basically, because a lot of the Vedas talk about moksha and like, OK, you guys, you're sick of the material world. Yeah. OK, we got some moksha for you now. Right. And this, so this is right. Yeah. Bhagavatam is meant to finally make it clear that even though we talked about uh, karma, material enjoyment, you know, like the, 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 the good living that brings material enjoyment. And and we've talked about moksha you know, renouncing the things of this world and becoming free from the sufferings of this world, that that's not where, that's not the end of the yoga ladder. That yoga right. goes still further, and it's only when you go further do you come to atma supersidity, complete satisfaction in the self. So Uddhava's, he's speaking on that topic right here. He's saying dharma, artha, kama, even moksha, right? I'm not interested in those. Why? Because I'm so satisfied. I have that atma supersidity when I'm serving you with love, right? That, that ultimately that... And, and so that's, you know what it's called? It's called Prem Pusharta Mahan. 
Ooh. That they're the four Prem, Purusha. Say that again. Say that again. Prem Purusharta Mahan. This is Lord Sri Chaitanya's teachings, right? That these four that were meant to get more out of this entire yoga tradition than material um, gain. And even there's more than even moksha. That right? That that the, the yoga that the yoga culture and practices, there's more. And that's Prem Purusharta Maham. That that prema or divine love is the great purusharta beyond these four, right? Prem purusharta mahan. You know, most of the world will never get out of the desire for, I just want sense gratification. I just want to gratify my senses. They'll never, they'll never get to the point where they'll even, they'll just think they didn't do it right. You know, if I just did it differently, then I would have been happy. If I just would have went down this career path, then I would have been, if I only attained this, and in that illusion, it, they're like like running quickly or lamenting. I wish I went to that dead end. I wish I went to this dead end. And that's what the material world is. A, a hope against hope that the material world could figure it out. And it can't. You can't figure out the material world. They're all dead ends. I know there's millions of interesting dead ends you could have chose. But none of them will give you what you actually want. So it's a rare person who just says, you know, it, it's nothing of this world. It's I want to escape this world. That that is the next phase of yogi. That's when a real person is on their spiritual path, and they desire moksha. And it's this bhakti that is like a, is the secret jewel. It's actually no 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 no. It's not just giving stuff up. It's going deeper, enjoying a a sweeter sweeter taste. This is the sweet goody. <laughs> Now, this is the sweet goody of bhakti. Now, this is all reminding me of a really important verse, Raghunath. Okay, and we're and this is all tying back into where we're going with desire, hint right? Me, hint me. It's like hint me up. Do, I, do I desire you know kama? Do I desire moksha? No, 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 no. For the bhakti yogi, they're being very careful to weed out those desires from the heart and focus and cultivate and fan the spark of the desire for pure devotion. So. Sri Chaitanya, he teaches this in his eight important verses called ah, cha -cha. Shikshastakam, Shikshastakam, which literally means eight instructions. Eight instructions, yeah. But, but the, all the teachings of Bhakti are right in these eight instructions, right? Nadanam najanam nasundarim kavitam vajagadishvakamare mama jammani jammani ishvare bhavatai bhakti or hajduki. Tvayi. Tvayi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. almighty Lord. I have no desire to accumulate wealth, nor to enjoy beautiful women, nor do I want any number of followers. Um, what, I w what I want only is the causes mercy of your devotional service in my life, birth after birth. Right? So these are the three things, mainly, that we try to put within our God hole. There's <laughs> okay, a God see. hole within the heart. A God-shaped hole. Nothing else will fit in that God-shaped hole. But what do I put in? I figure if I can get some wealth, it will fulfill that God hole. Or if I can find my, he said women, but it could be yeah. the idea of the perfect soulmate. Romance, perfect soulmate sexuality. will make me whole, make me complete. And it won't. You can't use a person to be your God. They can be a great friend. They can assist you on your spiritual path. But they can't. you can't make them your God. It, it, or you'll, 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 you're setting yourself up for a real screwed up relationship, right? And then, of course, uh, you know, the, the, the word you use was great. The, you know, the, the translation is there's no because it's very because when it was translated, it, it, it meant something different. But now it really means something. There's no, no amount of followers, right? Isn't it <laughs> yeah. funny? There's no amount of followers. Like, because now in, in social media, it's all about a follower. But the, yeah. the idea is there's no material validation that we can get in the world we want. I want the person to my left to think I'm okay, the person to my right to think I'm okay. And you know what? It's, there's no amount of validation of the material world that will satisfy the soul. You can get, and you, you find these people who actually get so much validation. They're on the cover of this magazine, they're on the cover of that magazine. Do, you, do we think they're the most whole and grounded people? It appears they are. And from looking at those magazine covers, like, yeah, they must have it together. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't. Trust me. Sometimes they're the most disturbed often. So it's not those things. It's such, it's such, that's such a powerful 
teaching. Uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that teaching made it to the Shikshastikam because yeah, you kind of made it in there. <laughs> it made it to the top eight instructions of Lord Chaitanya because uh, that's a big one, and it, because those are also like we are running to red lights. We're running down long, long, windy, beautiful, charming dead ends. Yeah. And then we get there, we're like, how the hell do I get out of here? I spent well, yeah. hours, I spent days, weeks, you know, years, resources. I'm in debt. And now where am I? I, I thought it was going to pay off. Well, that goes right to the quote that we had yesterday. You know, we shared it on Instagram. You saw that oh, one? yeah, say that again. That's, that's, that's it's from, from Francois. I'm, I'm, I'm really young. Francois. Très bien, Francois. Francois Merci says, Francois. Francois de la Rochefoucauld. De la Rochefoucauld. De la Rochefoucauld. Someone yes. help me with that. With French one of the, Martin, we have one French Martin. person here, Martin. Well, we got French Canadians too, right? We got Elizabeth yes, and right. Daniel. They're looking at us saying, oh man, you blew it. <laughs> He's famous no, here in okay. Canada. Right. How dare you say that? Francois. He's like, He's like George Washington. <laughs> you don't know so, Francois? Francois says, before we set our hearts too much upon anything, on Dunham, on Janam, on Sundarim, right? Yeah. Uh, before we set our hearts too much on anything, let us examine carefully, right? Let us examine how happy they are who already possess it, right? That is beautiful. These, those things that don't bring beautiful. happiness, you know? So uh, we don't want Dunham, Janam, Sundarim. We want to be like Adrian, gonna... Adrian Eagle. Right. Adrian like, Eagle. He's, he's getting into bhakti, spreading positivity. He's got spreading no his wings, spreading his <laughs> wings and flying. He's flying over, looking at all the crows. Help me, Adrian. I'm just, just a crow. Put me on your back. Take me around. Thank you so much, Adrian Eagle, for being our guest today on our walk on Wednesday. Thanks for everybody. Heart goes out to Lori Pag and um, say some prayers for your mom. Everything that we do in our life helps everybody around us as well. We want to upgrade our life. It's going to upgrade our everybody, everybody in our universe's life. So Lori is such a dedicated spiritualist. Her mother is her mother's fortunate reaping the have. benefits of her sincere devotion. Ah, <sighs> thanks everybody for joining us. Um, hey. Check out my website, raghunath.yoga. If you're interested, we're doing our pilgrimage to Nepal. There's a few spaces left, and I really mean just a few. Uh, we're leaving April 8th to the 20th, and also pilgrimage uh, in November to India, sacred India. And also, we're about to announce our uh, Super Soul 300 hour, our wisdom training, our Kirtan Academy is happening January at the Eco Village. Super excited about that. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful day, Wednesday, and it's a wonderful day, a beautiful day for a beautiful day. Now we got to see Adrian dance, Mayor, over here. Put him okay, on the dance. Okay, we got band. Adrian Eagle. Let's see. This guy can probably dance too. <laughs> That's me. Look at this beautiful man. That's the light bulb one. This is the motorcycle one.